Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. A few videos ago, I repaired and restored this HP ProBook 4520S to working and usable conditions, as well as putting in a RAM upgrade and SSD. But its CPU performance can still be improved, so that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. It currently has an i5 M450, and I'm going to be upgrading it to its maximum, an i5 M480. Now these CPUs are very cheap. This M480 only cost me $10, including tax and shipping. So if you're looking to upgrade one I of these... I said this wrong in the original video. I'm doing this voiceover. Cheap. It clocks 267 megahertz higher on base and max boost. But like the old one, it's still two cores, four threads. First, we're going to run PC Mark 7 to see how our old CPU can, performs so we can compare it to our new chip that we're going to install. This benchmark was released in 2011 when these i5 processors would have been very good for laptops. So we can get a pretty good, fair benchmark from this era of hardware with PC Mark 7. Also, the advanced edition is free on their website. They provide a key on the 3 d Mark website. Before we upgrade though, let's talk a little bit about our CPU here. Here it is, the i5-480M. Now, on the CPU there are two packages, there are two dies. This big one and the slightly smaller one. The big one is the CPU itself, and the smaller one is just graphics. Because this is actually the first series of Intel CPUs uh, like this, like the first core CPUs, to have integrated graphics chips. Previously, they just looked like this. This is a previous gen Core 2 Duo series. Now this has 478 pins, this has 988. So, um... This has more than twice the pins of laptop chips that I've worked with previously. So I am a bit nervous installing it, but I mean, I've never broken a CPU pin, so it should be fine. Also, quick thing about the graphics. Uh, it has the same iGPU on all of these i5 CPUs from what I can find. It can clock from 500 to 766 megahertz, and uh, it's pretty awful, actually. Uh, it's nothing to write home about. It's okay for just 720p video playback, but any 3D acceleration past dragging windows is not going to be a pleasant experience. Alright, let's go ahead and pop the laptop open. Really quickly, here's our PC Mark score. This is what we get from our benchmarks. This is our little benchmark result. And um, this was in PC Mark 7 Advanced Edition again with all of the tests selected. Okay, now let's install our CPU. I won't get too much into the actual teardown of the laptop. If you want to see that, go watch the dedicated repair video that I did on this laptop a couple weeks ago. Now this is not my main laptop, my main laptop is my Dell Precision with a 3rd gen Core i7. This is just for when I don't feel like carrying an 8 pound laptop around, because that thing is very, very heavy. Alright, so once I've taken out the screws on the bottom, then I can just start popping it open. Whoops. I'll take out the keyboard screws and then processor is right under the keyboard. Alright, our final screw is out, I think. Yeah, okay, this should just pop off. These CPUs are only 35 watts, so it doesn't take too much to cool them. And as I said in my first video on this machine, a dedicated graphics processor could have gone there. There were a lot of low-end cards from AMD. 
And I think there might have been an NVIDIA one too that could have gone there. Whoops, forgot that uh, the fan was plugged in. Here's our little heatsink. Aluminum with a copper cold plate. And there's our CPU. Oh. Oh, that's kind of disgusting. I'm glad I did that because I want to clean that now. So this is how laptop sockets work. This little screw is how you latch and unlatch the CPU. So now our little guy is free. It was installed with graphics chip facing up. This thing is still hot from running the uh, benchmarks. All right. Pop it into the socket and clamp it down. Okay, that's secure. I want to make sure that it works before I put the rest of the thing back together. I'll just kind of like pop the heatsink on here. I won't screw it in all the way and I won't connect the wire for the fan. I just want to see if the laptop will boot. And I know I didn't put thermal paste on it. Again, this is a boot test. I'm going to clean off the heatsink and install new thermal paste anyway. I'll just do the two screws in this cross section for ease of time. Ease of time, is that an expression? For saving time, I think that would be more appropriate. Charger isn't too long, so I'll just have to do that. Oh, hey. No, stop, don't do that, don't do that. So, it works. This thing goes through its BIOS extremely fast. It gives you like a quarter of a millisecond to press the escape key uh, before it starts booting. But we know it works, so that's good. I'm going to take this back off and uh, put on the thermal paste. While we're at it, we might as well clean this off as a little display piece. All right, we're gonna be using some, uh, some alcohol here, 91% isopropyl for the CPU, and then 50% for the fan. Uh, I accidentally used the 50% to clean a CD drive circuitry and, uh, and laser without realizing it because I had a 95% bottle that had the same label, like the same colors, it was from the same company. So I grabbed the wrong bottle and didn't look at the number and a lot of people got mad at me for that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> It looks like we've got some black stuff here. Okay, I don't think that's going to come off easily. I've decided on 70% instead because I'm just, I'm too rich for 50%. I can afford to use the, the fancy stuff. There we go. We get our two dyes nice and clean. I think the plural of dye is, is dyes in reference to CPUs. I don't think you would say CPU dice. All right, a couple days later, thermal paste has arrived. Quick reminder to always keep track of your screws. This is how I keep track of them. These three go in the back, these on the back side, these two go under the keyboard, and this one is on the CPU. If you need to draw a picture of your device and put the screws on it, that often works as well. You don't really need to do that with a laptop this old. But if you're working on something modern or anything made by Apple, it's going to have a lot more screws, so I recommend keeping better track of them than that. Now, I don't think I should just do one big blob in the middle. I think I should put some little blobs on each of the chips. I'll do one like that size on the CPU and one like that size on the GPU. And I don't think this stuff is conductive, so if I get it everywhere, it won't be a, too much of a problem. There we go. Now these CPUs run pretty cool, because they're only 35 watts. i5 M480, 2.67 gigahertz based, and our 8192 megs of RAM. So, that is perfect.
Also, I shouldn't have to say this, but just be really careful with these ribbon cables here, like this one on the power button. They break extremely easily and a replacement board is going to cost you probably like five dollars because you can't just replace the cable and they're very hard to solder back into place if you don't have experience. Actually, I forgot the little board that goes on the CPU. I think it's like this. Yeah, it goes like that. So, usually, like, especially when you're new to repairs, take a lot of pictures of every step when you are uh, disassembling a laptop or pretty much any smaller device because if you don't put it back together the exact right way it's not gonna hold up very well sometimes it just won't work at all okay it's finishing up our last benchmark here and I just kinda wanna talk about what happened so first time I ran the benchmark it crashed halfway through and I realized I hadn't plugged the CPU fan back in so I had to disassemble the laptop again and I also fixed an issue with this panel piece not fitting on correctly. Our lightweight score improved, our productivity score improved, our entertainment score actually went down by three points, uh, creativity score went up by about a hundred. That is pretty good. Computation score went up pretty greatly. And, uh, yeah, so we're seeing improvements based on this performance scale. But now I want to test temperatures and, um, endurance on a Cinebench test to see if it maintains a constant clock speed and acceptable temperatures. We're going to start off with a single core test to see what its single core clock frequency will be. Looks like it's clocked up to 2.926 megahertz, which is actually pretty decent for single core. So it's going to draw our little picture of a room as Cinebench does. But for the heat test, I'm going to go all core. Now, let's also check its all core boost because it'll be lower than its single core boost. Oh wow, already our core temps are in the 60s, so that's a little higher, although we do have, you know, 40 degrees until they hit max. So they're not going to be really throttling very much yet. Okay, so about 2.8 gigahertz, about 2.82, 2.83 now? I'm going to say 2.83 is the max all-core boost for this CPU. So I'm just going to let Cinebench run and see how hot these get. So this is a two-core CPU, four threads. So that's 65 and 66 on our two cores. So we'll see what that gets up to in 10 minutes when the test finishes. About halfway through the test, we've clocked all the way up to 3 gigahertz. Just clocked to 3001 megahertz. So that's 3.02 gigahertz. So, uh... Looks like we've got a self-overclocking chip here. Our highest temp was 71 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it didn't fully finish a render after 10 minutes, but it looks all right. So it counted down to zero. Our maximum clock was still 3001 megahertz and our max temp went up to 72 degrees, which is a lot higher than the mid to high 50s under max load that I was seeing with the 450M, but we're also getting quite a lot more performance. And the laptop is still very quiet. Cool. So, in conclusion, I'm very satisfied with this upgrade. If you do have a laptop with an older i5 processor that you want to upgrade to a more powerful one, I definitely do recommend it because these processors are very cheap and it's worth the very little money that you pay for them. 
Now we do have sensors on the motherboard for uh, temperature. Our max motherboard temp was 36 and there's another uh, CPU temp sensor inside the socket and that was 55 degrees max. Oh and I thought this was funny. Uh, the network card in this laptop is called the RT3090. So I always tell people I've got a 3090 in my laptop and they're like, an RTX 3090? And I say no, an RT3090. Anyway, that's it for this. Thanks everyone for watching. I uh, hope this helped anyone looking to upgrade and see you next time.